This episode of 321 Lay On Podcast is brought to you by LARPBox, a monthly subscription box for LARPers by LARPers. Go to LARPBox.com and use the promo code 321PODCAST to receive 10% off your next purchase. Yeah, I'm the president. Sounds more formal that way. It sounds really fancy. <laughs> My dad always had president on his business cards. He used to run insurance companies. And I always, oh, thought, okay. that looked really, I always thought that looked really cool. So sure, I, wanted yeah. to, I wanted to be president too. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to 321 Lay On Podcast, Next Level Nerds podcast about live action role play. On this show, we're trying to learn as much as we can about LARP and anything else that we find interesting. We appreciate you listening. If you enjoy, you can subscribe, get those new episodes as soon as they come out. And if you really like us, there's a few easy ways to support us, but the content's always free, so we're just happy you're here. But you can review us on iTunes, give us likes, like our Facebook page, and visit our Patreon if you want to support us that way. Next Level Nerd on Patreon. And check out nextlevelnerd.com. You'll see all of our shows on a bunch of different nerdy topics with cool people doing fun stuff. Today, I'm here. It's me, Ashton Ruby, and I'm joined by Ben. How are you doing today? I'm very well. How are you? I'm great. Ben is the president of the Adventurers Outlet, which is the umbrella company of B3 Imagination Studio, which is how I first heard about him. And it is, well, why don't you tell us? Uh, we are a uh, multifaceted uh, LARP equipment manufacturer. Uh, we do everything from foam swords to wood products, to plastics. Um, I have a background in mechanical engineering. Okay. And 20 years of foam fabrication experience. There's actually an industry of foam fabrication. You can get a job doing this stuff. Um, I've worked for a couple of the bigger companies in New England. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I've done a lot with foam. <laughs> yeah, that is sexy as that sounds. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, on a LARP podcast, sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, and that's you've been LARPing for how long? How long? Tell us about that and how it got started. Oh God, a long time ago. <laughs> um, in 1991, uh, I got my issue of Dragon Magazine in October, and it was the infamous Nero uh, okay. article, and it had a, like a little section all about live action role playing. And I jumped in my car and said, I, I have to do this. I, I've been, obviously, tabletop role-playing pretty much since D&D came out in the 70s. Okay. Um, back when being a nerd was a bad thing, and they made movies about it, and you were chased around by guys named Ogre. But um, uh, so in 1991, I, you know, I was freshman in college, and I was like, I, I have to do this. So I drove six hours to Boston and never looked back. Um, I attended the, uh, I think it was the November event, because I think I missed the October event of Nero. And at that, at that point, Nero was a huge game. It was 600 plus people oh. on, on a relatively uh, small campsite. So it just seemed like a mob. And I spent all night running for my life. I don't think I swung my sword offensively once. And I just, I just, I was hooked. I just had the yeah. time of my life. And I've, met people that were at that event that I only met later on in life. And I've met some of my best friends there. So it was a seminal moment as they say. Yeah, no, that's cool. And it's, it's cool for me to talk to people who have been doing it for so long. Cause, um, I did it very briefly when I was like in high school over a decade ago, uh, and pretty infrequently. And so then there was, you know, a 10 year gap. So it's kind of like getting back into it and meeting a lot yeah. of people and, um, it's a little easier now to get a bit of the history like online and people put together like YouTube videos and stuff. But uh, now it's really cool talking to people who've done it a long time and, and also know a lot of people in the community. It has so much changed in yeah. the last um, maybe like 10 years I've started to really notice because I, I dropped out of weapon making for uh, maybe 10 years, give or take. I was just doing it as kind of a side hobby thing because I was focusing on more of a traditional career path. And when I went and started B3, which we did uh, three years ago, maybe four years ago at this point, I'm, oh, I'm, old, I'm lo- losing my memory. Um, <laughs> that's when I started doing it full time again. I had enough of corporate America and all that fun mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I was just amazed at how the hobby had grown. I mean, they're just, and that's obviously a great deal due to the internet. It has great to do with technology, the sharing of technology. 
um, and a lot of companies pushing forward uh, the cause. Right. One of the things that I've uh, one of the things that that I've always noticed about LARPing, which is kind of a contradiction in in moving forward, is that LARPing is is a great homegrown business kind of thing. You can you know you can get ten friends and start a LARP on a campsite or even in your backyard, and you can be a LARP. Oh. Right. But there's so much fragmentation. There haven't there hasn't been much of an industry to push it forward, where you started to get really cool products that you were starting to see, or I shouldn't say starting, that have been out there now. Uh, companies like um, Epic Armory and mm-hmm. Calabasil. And mm-hmm. I probably sh- probably shouldn't be dropping competitors' name, although I don't <laughs> I, I don't consider them competitors because they're they're a little out of my league. Um, but you know we we're, we're we do our thing and we do it well. So mm-hmm. um, I hope that we're pushing that that cause a little forward in our own way because it, it's really neat. Right. Yeah, we've talked to a few other crafters and uh, I I think it's cool talking to, you know, you probably consider yourself a small business, right? Sure. Um, and, you know, people kind of just doing it on the side or whatever and you get that personal experience, the customizable, like, like I know you, you do customers, right, where people can order do. different hilts yep. and the different things that are really cool looking. Um, so, and we- that's that sets you apart definitely from, you know, Someone's just cranking out a thousand swords a week. <laughs> well, it's nice to have that kind of control um, yeah. because we don't have to place our orders through a company in India that's going to make them and you know ship ten thousand here. You know, right. if if you, if you need a sword a couple weeks from now and we can do it for you, we're happy to do it. And you know, the cool thing about making custom work is that you get to put the the offer weapon for lack of the foam weapon into the hands of the customer and is exactly what they want and their face lights right. up and it's great because <laughs> that that larping weapons are 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 props that help fulfill your vision of your character mm-hmm. and it's a pretty important one because a it helps to fulfill your character's vision but you also get to hit people with them and that's you know <laughs> right. and that's important it's practical use yeah right, absolutely <laughs> so that's a very satisfying yeah. side of it is being able to do that sure so we like, like we like custom work. Yeah, and it's not just a custom shirt which somebody might love. It's it's like you're saying they get to choose, and it's something they've pictured probably in their head, you know, exactly. for years maybe. You know, yep. Um, People have an image of themselves as they're constructing their LARP character or their tabletop character or whatever it is. They have an image of themselves. And in the case of LARP, you have to present that image to the world. Mm. And it's fun to have just the right sword or just the right costume or just the right. Uh, cosmetics so totally. yeah it's fun stuff cool let's back up just a little bit um do you want to take us through kind of you mentioned it started three or four years ago like what was kind of that that whole story um from kind of conception until sure it happened uh so about four years ago again i had just gotten tired of corporate america i was working for a very large company you know 250 million dollar a year publicly traded mm-hmm. company and it was as corporate as the day is long, and that just wasn't my style. Yeah. So I decided that you know I wasn't getting any younger. So I, if I was going to do this, and if I was going to do it, you know, full time, I was going to do it to the hilt. Some pun intended. And <laughs> sure. Um, and just the timing worked out, and the the young lady that works with me, Alyssa Iris, Alyssa Myris, um contacted me right around the same time um, out of nowhere and she wanted to make swords and I wanted to make swords so we made a business and made some swords so, or at least I reformatted my existing business the adventures outlet was uh, incorporated in 1996 and it's never gone out of business it's only ebbed and flowed in terms of its size and its prosperity I see yeah actually I just remembered a while back I think there was an article maybe you had linked um, that was a story about when you'd gotten started and and a little bit further back of the Adventurers Outlet. Um, and that was still making weapons or something so else? Or? I started making, um, you know, just your standard off-the-shelf duct tape and, you know, ult- we called them ultralights in the day, fiberglass or PVC, depending. Uh, my first catalog had PVC weapons in it. Um, yeah, that was in longer ago than I care to remember. I think 1996, 97, give or take a little bit. Okay. Um, 
and we, I moved into another area, which was, I was a big paintball fan. Still oh. am, but I'm too old to play it. Um, it's too much work. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to be able to LARP and paintball at the same time. So I came up with a reusable foam paintball. I called it Action Ball. And it was basically, it wasn't, it didn't have paint in it. It was like a buffer paintball. And I had that manufactured and I didn't know anything about manufacturing at the time. I was a history major from Hamilton college with no practical skills at all. Um, <laughs> I knew nothing about manufacturing. And so I contacted a company, did all the research, made this product. And, um, that opened up a bunch of different avenues of opportunity because being able to play quote, foam paintball, allowed us to play a science fiction game, which we hadn't had before. And that allowed us to then move into playing a pirate game, which we hadn't had nice. before. So it, it, it was a, a gateway to, to different genres of games, which I always, I've always i always found to be a lot of fun. I like medieval games. They're, they're great. But I much prefer a new experience. And you can get a lot more new experiences with different genres of games. Sure, yeah. Yeah, you can only... Slay so many goblins and <laughs> that's true. So many undead skeletons or whatever. Before at least it's a pirate skeleton. <laughs> exactly. Well, every genre has its has its fun, has its um, boilerplate plot lines sure. and their boiler. You know the stuff that that really builds those genres. Yeah. And you can only join so many orders of knighthood, and you know <laughs> you, you can only you know bow to so many kings and whatnot. But sure, uh, eventually you just want to hit people and call it a day. So yeah. What's your current game? Um, You're still playing right now? Yes, as as much as I can anyway. I have a beautiful six-year-old daughter, and she keeps me pretty busy. Yeah. Um, But I do get up to Canada uh, four or five times a year to play Bicoline. Oh, nice. And and that is a really neat experience uh, because it it, it shows a different side of LARPing that I haven't experienced in the New England area. And if there's a game that's been in... New England, if it's within a couple hours of Boston, I've, I've hopefully tried it at some point or another. Because, again, I, I'm looking for new experiences, new information. Um, Bicoline was an h- entirely new experience to me. And obviously because of its grandeur and its size and its attention to detail and its aesthetics, which are unmatched, mm-hmm. at least I've, that, that I've ever seen anyway. And um, it's been very enjoyable and a lot of my older friends, you know, friends in their mid forties, you know, even younger fifties, whatever, it's easier to get away, believe it or not. It's easier to get away to go to Canada for a week than it is to go to four five, eight events, even if they're locally during the year. So it's sure. a lot of fun. I make it up a little more often because I like the campaign days. Cause that's just, you know, unadulterated, you know, horrid combat for eight hours straight. They make no, there's no apologies. You know, there's that there was too much fighting. It's just, it's wonderful. Uh, In case you didn't notice, I enjoy fighting. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, I definitely would like to, uh, like I said, getting back into the hobby and learning what else is out there. And um, It's well worth the trip. Yeah. Uh, however you get there, even if you just get there for a campaign day, just to walk around the campsite. I say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm air quoting campsite. It, it's a world. It's yeah. not even a village because there's more than one of them. There's, it's, wow. it's, it's, it's incredible. Now Bicoline can write me a check for all this advertising I'm giving them. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> right. It'll be Canadian money, though, so. Um, ah, there you go. So you said you had one uh, partner or assistant? Uh, Alyssa, Alyssa Iris works for me, and uh, she does most of our fabrication. And okay. she's, she's great. She's a, a force of nature. Mm-hmm. And um, recently, I've joined forces with Bart uh, Brzee from Lartbox. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've got a little corporate cooperative going. And I'm really excited about it because Bart has a great ability to add that extra aesthetic that we've been lacking. And I, I'm first person to admit the fact that, you know, I, I, I do the Model T of swords. You know, it's, they're all great <laughs> as long as you like black. That's the way I used to do things anyway. And now <laughs> sure. I, I understand the aesthetic that LARPers require a, a higher degree of aesthetics nowadays. And I'm totally behind that. And it's nice to be working with somebody that can help us get there. Mm-hmm. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think we're going to produce some really cool stuff. We already have Bart worked with us on the, uh, the Kickstarter project for the, the LARP musket and the LARP pistol. Mm-hmm. 
uh, the flintlock stuff. And that worked, that went great. Um, he took a product that had been around for almost 20 years, ever since they made that, that foam paintball. And, um, so he, he came down to my shop just one day to, to work on the water jet and cut some leather and whatnot. And he noticed these muskets sitting up on the wall and he's like, what are those? And I told him this, you know, brief story about, I needed a way to do indoor combat because we couldn't use the paintball guns really close because people mm. were getting hurt. So we yeah. needed a, we needed a close quarters way to do that. So I made this I trial and error kind of invented this little spring gun version of it. You know, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just a, basically a toy. And, uh, I made a bunch of different evolutions of it for games for pirates and, uh, play this awesome game up in Maine called Roanoke. Um, and they needed muskets and stuff. So, Anyway, long story short, he's like, that's awesome, but it needs that 10% kick. It needs that 10%, you know, upgrade. And he came back with some drawings, and they were awesome. So we, we launched it, and it did great. I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to be a fun product line for for everybody. So, Yeah, um, yeah it definitely seemed uh, innovative and something I had not really seen, you know, I, what little I've seen, it's just been either Nerf or, um, you know, something that you can just get pretty much in the store that people tend to paint or whatever, you know, so. And a lot of that stuff has a perfect place. I mean, a, right. a science fiction game looks great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, if you're going to run around and be a pirate, you want something that looks like a pirate gun or, you know. Right, yeah. I want somebody to run like a good revolutionary war, <laughs> Napoleonic war kind of time period thing. That'd be great. I'm all in. Nice. So. That went well, and those are shipping out and available now, right? The are available muskets? Now. Absolutely, yep. We're, we're still putting the, the finding, finishing touches on the Kickstarter orders. Uh, okay. some, of the more, some of the more challenging projects, like the, the custom work and the blunderbuss took a little while longer than we thought it was going to, but that's pretty... If you've been in the manufacturing world for a while, you realize that nothing goes as planned. I don't think, <laughs> it, I don't think it does that in any world, so... Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're we're actually just finishing up with that now, so nice. we're uh, yeah, it's great. We've got some distributors around the country and in Canada. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, um, the artisans du jour. Oh, I'm, nice. I'm butchering their name because <laughs> sure. I can't, despite playing Bicoline now for two years, Sounds I good still stink at French. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or Quebecois, as the case may be. Mm. Um, a lovely language. I'm just a, I just can't. I can't do it. <laughs> it's <just> terrible. <laughs> Fortunately, everybody yeah. speaks the language of, of foam violence. So mm, that works out yeah. well. <laughs> that and drinking. <laughs> Universal go. language of drunk. Right. Brings us all together. That's right. <laughs> very cool. And the whole uh, Bart moving and joining up with you, that's very recent, right? Yeah. he um, He's still moving into the shop. Every time I think he's done moving, he comes with another van load of stuff and <laughs> loads it into the shop. So... Uh, we're finding places for things, but he's already started producing some really cool stuff. So he made this awesome, like four foot long chainsaw. The oh, thing, I saw that. Yeah. Eh, I thing him rules. On yeah. Yeah. Cost an arm and a leg to sell it to somebody, but it's a one off. It's great. He made these really cool Bowie knife looking dagger things today. You know, that is. Watching LARPers facilitate their imaginations has always been awesome. And that's what I had in mind when I, I made the makerspace part of the B3. Originally, the B3 was there would be three aspects of the business. There would be the LARP supply where we do the weapons. There would be a makerspace where we, people would come in and do their own stuff. And then the third was the 3D scanning and figurines. Um, the makerspace, uh, while we had some interest in it, just didn't have legs and the figurines everybody loved the idea of them but they were just too costly and expensive so Mm -hmm. out the door fortunately the first leg of it the 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 manufacturing side of things took off pretty quickly so that that was nice so that's what we're largely relying on now Um, that and we do some uh, business to business sales and what i mean by that is we work with other companies and we help them manufacture their product lines for them yeah. Because again, I have a my background is manufacturing. So, you know, if you have an idea for something that you need ten, a hundred, a thousand, a million of, good chance I can help you with it. Um, if not, we make it for you. I can either point you in the right direction, or I can show you how to make it so you can do it yourself. Sure. Um, 
And you know, I'll have to answer this if you don't want to, but <laughs> is that outside of LARP or is that all LARP businesses, the business to business stuff you're I mean, manufacturing? I branch out a little bit. I mean, at a certain point, you do what you need to do to keep the lights on in the building. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, so if somebody comes to me, I, I had a guy who came to us a couple months ago who wanted he found us through various leather working connections and he wanted straps for symbols like, uh, um, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. for like, sure. a, like a concert. So we helped him with that. You know, that's just something simple that we could do. <laughs> it's nice to accommodate. Nice. Um, all the, com- the companies that I worked for in the past were what we refer to in the business as job shops, which is that they don't make manufacture their own product lines they manufacture other people's product lines for them in the, in this case specifically in foam and plastics um so if somebody comes to me and says oh, i need cymbal straps like i'm eh, no problem you know i'm used to putting on a different hat and making something right new, so. sure yeah it definitely served you well uh <laughs> yeah, you never, well, know, you never know what you're going to be adding to somebody's custom weapon that's <laughs> true enough true enough <laughs> cool and then yeah tell us a little more um about certain products you make or offer, um, what's popular, what, what do you enjoy making? I know so, it's like three questions, but <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I try to remember all three parts of it. Um, our heavy lifting product lines are the, the ones that sell the most are the foam tipped swords. Cause in, in, at least in the U S that still is the, the gold standard people like that, that, it's kind of an old fashioned word, but they like that buffer design. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm not going to get into the discussion of what's safer, what's better, what's this, though, it's that. Um, it's what people seem to want in this neck of the woods. And okay. it's what we're more than happy to, to supply for them. Uh, in the future, we are intending, in the very short future, we're actually working right now on it, is to, to scale up the aesthetics and the realistic look and still be able to satisfy that need for a, a soft foam tip that will you know, be able to pass in the various different games in the, in the U.S. Um, and, you know, hopefully around the world. Yeah. It's, um, some of our other more fun products, or at least I think they're fun because they're kind of like unusual. I like unusual products. Yeah. Um, we, make, uh, we make air cannons, like, um, just like they fit in with the musket theme. <laughs> um, they're compressed air cannons. They fire uh, foam relaxation balls. So you know, <laughs> nice. we're actually we're actually thinking about starting a rental service for them because I have mm. a few of them, and uh, they're they're not cheap. I mean, there's a lot of time and effort that goes into one of them, but uh, I think renting them out might be the way to go. Sure, um, leasing them. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um. And one of our other favorite ones is something I'm personally very proud of because I, I got a U.S. patent for it, which is the it's the B3 bow, which is the it's B3, but it also stands for the beanbag bow, or in this case, it's a spell packet bow. Mm-hmm. Uh, f- since we're talking to LARPers, for LARPers, it's a spell packet bow. And what it's designed to do is give you the experience and feeling and mechanics of actual archery without the, you know, rigid shafted arrow that's so common in LARP archery. Because mm-hmm. uh, there's frankly, there's just a lot of games in the U S that won't, their insurance companies or for whatever reason, right. they don't use that type of archery. Um, and so this is a, a good substitution for it. Um, the other fun part of it is it, it's just a fun thing to do. So um, <laughs> we've we've run games for like Boy Scout campsites. Uh, we've run games nice. for, you know, any kid from the age of like six to 16 just likes winging stuff at each other. So it's just <laughs> it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. So we're pretty happy about that one, too. Uh, that and the, the musket obviously is done very well. We're having a lot of fun with that. Those are the biggies. We're proud that we offer original and unusual products right um, it's fun to be able to facilitate other types of adventure yeah uh, so that's that's what i enjoy personally anyway keeps me keeps me going sure yeah and that was i was just talking to somebody about like why do i like larp and even D and stuff is about you know the game of the imagination and there's no limits and there's no wrong answers and so to be limited sometimes by what your sword's going to look like is kind of a downer, you know, that's sure. almost a disconnect, but 
to be able to craft your own or find people who are making these these facilitating that you know imagination in different ways that's well, in the name right <laughs> that's the whole goal that's yeah, the whole so that's, goal that's one awesome of the, one of the things i love about larpers is there there's no lack of imagination yeah everybody's got something to contribute and it's super fun to watch it come to life yeah. um, so and i bet it's a lot of work but it's must be fun making these fun products yeah, i love going to work <laughs> all day yeah i love going to work and i wasn't able to say that in some of my many past jobs so right sure uh, it's good time it's good stuff um yeah we're 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 doing well and we're having a lot of fun can't argue too much with that in any kind of business right yeah yeah pay the bills and have fun doing it there you go that's a dream i guess right right <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'd love a, you know, yacht or something like that. So buy more <laughs> buy more swords, everybody, but you know. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh so shopping on uh the website is probably the best way. Do you do um festivals or conventions or go to games at all? So we don't do a lot of retail. Um we don't have a re- huge retail, at least brick and mortar type presence. Um our 98% of our sales, sales go through the internet or through um, word of mouth, you know, give or take right. commissions and whatnot. We do have a presence at Bicoline. Uh, we, we work with a company called Made by Hand Leather. And now that we're working with Artbox, we'll also have a presence with them. Bart does a lot of conventions and things like that. So mm-hmm. he, he'll be more of a retail side of things. Uh, but yeah, again, 98% of our stuff is at uh, b3is.com. Plug, 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 plug. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll get it all at the end. <laughs> there you go. That sounds good. Yeah. I don't have to be subtle about it. No way. Yeah. And if it's not on the website, and I'm the, by the way, for all the people out there that are right now saying, oh, the website is just kind of clunky and whatnot. I know. I just, <laughs> I'm not a website developer. I, I am working with people now that are, and they're, they're helping us get it better and up to the level that it needs to be. If it's not on the website, just reach out to us at sales at b3is.com. Some of the ways you manufacture is much different than, say, like an Etsy seller or, you know, I know a lot of people just from my game and their friends that you talk to them, they'll make you a weapon or whatever. Sure. Um, but it's going to be, you know, maybe camper mat foam and, you know, their razor blade and all that. But you have some special equipment, right, that can do some really cool things. Very cool things. Um, I have a, one of the nice things about having a background in manufacturing is I've had the, the the privilege and pleasure of being trained on a lot of different types of machines. So we have a lot of really fun stuff. We have a CNC router which can create molds, or that's what makes our muskets for us. And it doesn't do it all by itself, I assure you, but um, <laughs> it's what we do use. We can use it for all kinds of things. Um, we have a water jet which allows us to do all kinds of very complicated shapes and profiles and allows us to make tools that normally would cost an unreasonable amount of money to have somebody else make for us. We can make in a fairly short order. And then we have a host of other different projects and products that uh, we make custom machines for. That was part of my background is, is making the, or at least designing the machines that would make certain product lines. So we're lucky enough to be able to, have a lot of that fun toys around kicking around Bart's yeah. certainly having fun with them so yeah <laughs> we must be doing something right yeah yeah i think i saw a video once uh they were doing some really cool like um like a shield design and it was like this pretty intricate celtic knot kind of thing or whatever and just yeah. had you just like programmed it in and went and did it and i was like wow that's that's awesome because like cool. the precision uh was just like perfect you know the the it's stream kind of the stream of the water jet is ten thousandths of an inch wide, so it can hold that type of tolerance. Um, it's it's a servo system, and it's just it's as accurate as all get out. Uh, yeah. It's it's way more accurate than we actually need, but you know, <laughs> yeah. um, nice. it's it's very cool. It's a great machine, and it, it it allows us to do all kinds of fun projects that would normally be just a little out of reach for your you know they are out of reach for your average you know, camp mat and razor blade right. uh, fabricator, which right. don't get me wrong. Camp mat, camp mat fabricators go crazy. You know, do your thing. Um, right. Yeah. No, I it's love, all great. I, it's just, 
I love seeing the stuff that people can make in their in their garages. It amazes me. It's yeah. so cool. Yeah, I've, uh, even some of the people, the guy that's on, also on the show, Joe, he's uh, does a lot of the props and stuff for our game, and he's just made some really cool things, uh, especially like monsters and stuff. Yeah, uh, and it's all just stuff he bought at Home Depot and <laughs> glued together in his basement. I'm a big believer in Home Depot engineering. Yeah. So if I can't buy it at Home Depot, I won't make a machine around it. It's not entirely true. Home Depot and Mc, <laughs> Home Depot and McMaster Car. That makes the world go around for me. Anyway, <laughs> that's cool. I, I I used to of the games that I ran, I used to enjoy making the props and making the special effects and things like that. I don't have quite as much time and leisure as I would like to to do so now. But uh, that that was always a very fun part of running games for me. Yeah, you were on staff before. Oh God! Um, <laughs> would you like a list? Um, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, Everything. feel free to name drop your one or or not. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, see totally up to you. Uh, Atlas One, which was the science fiction game. Uh, Pirates, which was a pirate themed game. I ran plot lines for Nero. I ran for Wildlands, which was a Nero subsidiary game run by Rob Ciccolini, who's one of the pillars of LARPing community, especially in New England. Um, if you if you run with Rob, you've uh, you've had a privilege because he knows what he's doing. Um, I le- forgot where I left off in terms of the many games I've run. But, um, and when I say I've run, by the way, it usually was uh, my ex-wife who ran them, and I took all the credit for it, which was great. Um, she, did, she, she would do 98% of the heavy lifting, and I would make cool props. So mm. that's how I ran things, quote unquote, again, air, <laughs> air quoting. Yeah. Um, well, Joe, his wife's also on staff too, so he can, yeah. he's right there with you. There you go. He's not here, so I can say that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I still enjoy it. I hope to run some stuff for Bicoline if they'll let me. Nice. Um, just little stuff. You know, just, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's fun to do, and it's, it's a purely creative outlet as opposed to, creativity that's supposed to have a commercial end to it. That's a different feeling. It's a different totally. motivation. Um, I think I just want to shoot people and hit them with swords in, in, a, in a fun way. So. Yeah. And have some, some reason. Yeah. I'm a really very reward simple. at the end. <laughs> that's right. I'm really a very simple LARPer. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not hard to, it's not hard to entertain me for too long. No, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. It's, yeah. Keep it simple. I'm just happy to be there most of the time, you know? That's right. <laughs> well, there's an A in the word for, for a reason. There's action in the word for a mm-hmm. reason. Otherwise, it's just sitting around in, in uncomfortable armor. So. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you do armor and stuff, too? I know you do shields. Um, uh, we haven't delved into armor yet because it's, it's almost armor is almost entirely custom, at least if right. you're going to do it right. Um, I've certainly made enough for myself over the years. I, pl- I, I, I don't know if you play the SEA or if you participate in the SEA. Uh, I, let's go with participate in the SEA because I don't want to sure. piss anyone off. Um, <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. And I, I really enjoyed making my own, my own kit and my own weapons and things like that. And, but I also enjoyed not breaking my fingers. Um, yeah. So I <laughs> stopped doing that a while ago. It's a, it's a great uh, uh, activity. Uh, and I wish I had found it maybe 10 years younger than I did. <laughs> sure, yeah. Now they have the, the, the live steel, the armored combat federation stuff. They, uh, I've been watching the thing on uh, History Channel. Um, what the heck is it called? Night Fights on the History Channel. Yeah, nice. these, these guys are insane. <laughs> and I mean that in a very fun kind of way, but uh, holy crap. They're, they're taking this to the next level. And Jesus, it's fun as hell to watch. <laughs> and no, I'm not getting paid to say that. So, <laughs> cool. So, anything coming up soon, or anything you'd like to see happen soon? Again, it's gonna we're gonna focus a lot on aesthetics and making stuff better looking, more realistic looking, while maintaining safety and functionality that that people have come to know us for. Safety is is my driving concern anytime I make anything that's my number one concern performance comes second aesthetics generally comes third don't tell Bart I said that because he'll probably you know back up again Lee yeah that's right (laughs) Uh, 
but yeah, uh, we want to make everything look better. And at least that's what I want to do anyway. So, yeah. and I, th- I think I have some say in it. I'm not entirely sure sometimes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we have, we have some, uh, we have some new products in the, in the wings. I got a, a crossbow that fires, uh, mega darts that I've been dorking around with uh, along the same lines as the, the musket, except it's a crossbow it uses a oh. elastic for, it doesn't actually have a bow. It, ha- it uses an elastic so you can, you can use it in places that have outlawed uh, actual crossbows. You, there's no way you could actually fire a real bolt with it. That's just one of them, but we're, you know, I'm not happy unless I'm making something new. There'll be some new stuff coming up. Yeah. Right, there's always fun stuff. Stay tuned, as they say. Indeed. Any social media or anything you can people can kind of keep their ear to the ground on, or? Well, we have a Facebook page, uh, which is B Three Imagination Studio. I know that's uh, not very original, but that's the name of it. Um, and <laughs> Alyssa is going to start uh, helping us with an Instagram account. And I know okay. this stuff comes second nature to to most people now, but it is not second nature to me. Um, I I. I'm old and I'm a fuddy duddy and I don't like the internet and it scares me. Um, <laughs> so, oh, uh, I do too. So, no, I, yep. it's, it's not where my brain goes. My brain doesn't go to marketing right away. It doesn't go to, hey, let's tell the world about the thing that I just made. Uh, my brain goes to, I made this cool thing. Now let's go make the next cool thing. Yeah. So, uh, it's one of the things that I'm hoping Bart helps us with. I know because he, he's got a great head on his shoulders for marketing and promotion. Mm-hmm. But I think he's going to help us a great deal in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. Cool guy. And um, he's gone real far in a short amount of time. So absolutely. It's a great asset. Talented. He's more than that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That'd no, be I, cool. He's just a resource that I call upon. Yeah. He's, he's a tool. <laughs> Take him off the he's shelf. A, he's a machine. <laughs> he's a machine, by the way. He, I remember having that kind of energy. He's, he's always in the shop. He's just a, he's just a machine. So God bless him. Yeah, that keeps the business thriving and just a new perspective. And, you know, I've, I've worked at companies that don't do that, you know, and they yeah. get stale and absolutely they get burnt out and yeah. that'll just kill you. Someday he'll have a kid and that'll just knock it all out of him. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think I'm going to make it too many games this year, unfortunately, with now a second. Yeah, two. Two of them. It's one six months old, so. That's cool. I only have one of the little things, so you know, yeah. I, occasionally I can get away. Yeah, and she's six now, so it's, it's she's a lot easier to to do fun stuff with. I might take her off to Bicoline at some point or another because I think she'd have fun dressing as a princess and running around with other people dressed as knights and princesses. So, and it'd be a heck of a lot cheaper than Disney World. <laughs> there you go. That should be the slogan. That's right, Bicoline. We're cheaper than Disney World. Bring your princesses here. Yeah. Oh, I like that. There Disney, you go. Disney probably wouldn't like it. Just don't let them out after dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we have become good friends with uh, people we had in the show a while ago um, that run a game in New York. And he basically started the game for his daughters. Um, oh, that's cool. Because he wanted, you know, a safe and absolutely a lot of their friends had like certain things like they they wanted to have a game that didn't have certain things that people yep. were just not cool yep. with or uncomfortable with and yep. and it's cool because that was i don't know half a decade or so ago so now they're they're older and i actually went to a game and it was a very young group it was like the youngest group of lovers ever seen <laughs> yep. Yep. uh and it's mainly because he had you know crafted around his his daughter so that's very cool so there you go yep and I've always thought uh, Kid LARP would be super successful. I'm sure they're out there. but There are a couple in uh, New England. Um, I can't think of uh, There's a company called Guard Up, which runs a summer camp oh, cool. uh, LARPing theme. And I know they do LARPing stuff in their – it's a dojo. It's like a, a martial arts place. I see. And I know they do that kind of stuff all the time up there. So they, they, they certainly have the right idea in regards to kids. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like a living nightmare to me to go run a LARP for a bunch of six-year-olds. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, it takes a certain person. Yeah, very special people. Uh, people stronger than I am anyway. Yeah. Very cool. Anything we didn't cover, uh, either about yourself or the store, you want to make sure people know? Um, you know the thing I like to mention is that we like challenges. Um, so bring us a challenge. 
And if you're a business, bring us your business challenge. Uh, you know, I'm more than happy to share our information if it's if it's at all feasible, and mm -hmm. more than happy to to help out facilitate growing our relief fund pastime. Yeah. I don't know if it's a hobby. I don't know if it's a lifestyle. I don't know if it's a pastime. It's probably all of the above. Yeah. Uh, but it is what it is. It's what we love, and let's make it better. So. Perfect. Well said. That's sort of why we do the podcast, I guess. It's there you go. Spread the word and absolutely let people know it's up. And it's it's not as weird. It's a little weird, but it's not as weird as you might think. <laughs> it's not weird at all. Believe <laughs> yeah, me, no. the bar of weird has changed dramatically over the last you know, yeah, 20, 20 years. So I don't I don't use the word anymore because it's it's almost irrelevant. Um, right. Yes. So weird is good. Right, yeah. I mean, that's sort of our, our message we're trying to get yeah. across. But... Now, here's a fun little Old secret people. that they didn't yeah. tell me when I was a kid, which is that nerds grow up to be engineers and business owners, and they get paid. And that's, that's an important aspect. They're, they're, they're smart. They're industrious. They're dedicated. Um, and life turns out better for nerds as they get older. Take it to heart, kids. There you go. <laughs> Stick with it. it. Gets better. No, yeah, I totally believe that. And uh, I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't say I'm in the front or end of that. When's your next LARP game you're planning to go to? Planned that would be Bicoline, and that would be in May. I'm going to go to one of their uh, adventure days, or I guess the campaign days is what they call them. Again, it's you know eight hours of unbridled combat with followed by eight hours eight hours of unbridled drinking. <laughs> there you go. It has, a certain it has a certain attraction to it. Yeah. Nice. So if you want to get up to Canada in May, say hi to Ben. There you go. And take an awesome sword with you from his from his shop. Very cool. I appreciate you coming on, Ben. Uh, That's my pleasure. Let's, let's get all the information one more time for everybody who is interested, because they should be by this point. B3 Imagination Studio, B3IS.com. That's B as in boy, the number three IS. Dot com, um, B3 Imagination on Facebook, sooner or later B3 Imagination on Instagram. Um, I promise it might happen. Um, or sales at b3is.com if you want to contact us directly. And uh, that's pretty much it. So that's how we do. Well, thank you very much for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, no, thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks again, Ben. Be sure to check out. B3 Imagination Studios for some awesome gear and lots of very cool things coming in the future. But this has been 321 Lay On Podcast, Next Level Nerds LARP Podcast. Visit nextlevelnerd.com. You can connect with us there and see of all see all of our other shows like the Next Level Nerd Movie Podcast. Justin and Mitch defend movies that they love that aren't critically or commercially successful. Sugar Frosted Serial, our podcast on television series, currently going through the third season of Daredevil on Netflix, and the Nerd Herds Gaming Podcast, where a variety of hosts discuss different topics from video games, tabletop top games. We got a magic episode that just came out, so we're trying to cover it all. Find us anywhere, just search Next Level Nerd. So until next time, LARP enthusiasts, thank you very much for listening, and remember, spread the word, spread the nerd. <laughs> there we go it got all quiet so i was like did i forget the question <laughs> sure you never have to deal with technical problems in the shop oh yeah no that never happened machines never break by the way <laughs> especially especially complicated ones that have you know computers and stuff attached to them no never mm, never yeah